Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 6 of season 3 of Supergirl Midvale. And I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this episode. It was quite a bit of fun. And it really does a lot to sort of shed some light on what it was like for Alex and Kara growing up. And really shows us the moment where they really genuinely came together as sisters. Uh, now, I have to say, I do agree with the criticism that people have been throwing around of this episode is that it feels basically like a, an, an episode of Riverdale. And yeah, it's true. It re I kept thinking that while I was watching the episode. It's like this version of Riverdale that they boiled down into one episode and put, it in, put Supergirl in it. But I don't really have a problem with that because I really enjoy Riverdale. It's a very fun show. I like it a lot. <clears throat> And uh, what was going on in this episode? I mean, it was fun to try and figure out what was going on. Um, and just the general vibe of, of it all was a little bit different than uh, what happens, with, than what we usually see on Supergirl. And, you know, I mean, like I said, it was just a fun episode. Um, some nice nods to the Superman mythos. I mean, you got Erica Durant coming in. Uh, the name of the character that she played was Noelle Neal, which was the name of the actress that played Lois Lane on the 50s Superman TV show. And of course, Erica Durant was Lois Lane on Smallville. Uh, Chloe Sullivan is also a character that was originally introduced in Smallville and was later made canon in uh, the comics. Uh, what is mentioned, so she exists on Supergirl's Earth. And... Uh, you know, we also get a little nice moment with John. Uh, some people, I think, were a little unhappy about him turning out to be Noel Neal in disguise, but I think this just kind of feeds into the fact that he was he, that he was keeping an eye on Kara from the very beginning, and that he's always cared, and I think has always understood that in a lot of ways they're very similar. You know, the relationship that relationship between the Kryptonians and the Martians of, you know, we're basically the last of our kind is is a really interesting dynamic that I always really did like. <clears throat> and Kara kind of, in a lot of ways, is more has more in common with Martian Manhunter. Kara came to Earth as an adolescent. John came to Earth as an adult. This is all leads to them having very different experiences than Clark, who came to Earth as a baby. Earth is his home. They have connections to a, a, their home, their planet, their culture. They, these are places that they remember. And you can tell that even though Kara has been on Earth for years at this point, it's still a painful adjustment. She's still feeling that loss every minute of every day. Um, and John's speech to her about how, um, you know, you have to be human now. You have to think that he's echoing what he probably wished someone had said to him a long time ago. So in retrospect, it's quite all, it's all very, very poignant. And um, for an episode that was basically told almost entirely in flashback, this was really solidly done. Like flashbacks are, I think, hard to keep interesting. But this episode did that, did it really well. The only thing that really seriously bugged me about it is they sort of act like the jock, the, the football player guy, getting publicly admitting that he smoked pot was like some sort of enormous punishment. I mean, he got suspended. Uh, yeah, he's going to basically be out of school for like, a, what, a week, two? He maybe misses a couple of football games. Uh, I think the cops are going to be have bigger problems what, with the sheriff turning out to be a murderer than you know, doing any sort of prosecution of this person. So, yeah, he's basically going to get a slap on the wrist and be right back to being the same obnoxious asshole that he's always been. I mean, granted, uh, he's probably not going to do that with Kara when Kara's around, but still, it uh, sort of feels like they really made an overblown deal about what happened to him. Like, no, he's not going to suffer any serious repercussions from that situation. And... Uh, Let's see, what else, what else? A uh, nice little nod to Lex Luthor. And of course we have somebody making fun of Superman's traditional costume with, uh, with the red shorts. I mean, I've never really understood why people get such a bug up their butt about that. But, you know, okay, whatever. Even in the modern times, that sort of 
aspect of the costume is usually pushed aside these days. And I'm like, okay, fine. People's tastes change. It's not as if the Superman costume hasn't been tweaked more than once over the years. So, okay, fine, whatever. And, of course, Supergirl, uh, because of her costume, she doesn't have to deal with that. Incidentally, it is kind of established that she basically wears um, something that looks like those Japanese uh, bloomers, you know, the Japanese gym shorts or something like really short bicycle shorts underneath the skirt. So she's not flying around, flashing the city her underwear. And, uh, yeah, guys, uh, that's all I had to say about this episode. It was a nice little bit of fun. Had a strong but enjoyable Riverdale vibe. So I'm going to call it here, everybody. <clears throat> As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi. And please also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good time.